All right, so if you're just coming in, guys, this part of the video is going to be talking about Trend Spider and their automatic trend, um, trend line system. So what this system does is just what it sounds like. It draws your automatic trend lines for you, uh, or draws your trend lines for you, excuse me. And this makes it so you can go through charts, for example, on your watch list, and it will just quickly show you the most dominant trends. And if you have the function turned on in TrendSpider, it will also give you these little alerts for when it is failing or when it is breaking the trend. Green for bullish breaks and red for bearish breaks. Now there are different kinds of trend lines with their system. There's three currently, I believe. They have the original the enhanced and the experimental. I believe the original is the default, but I've spoken with the founders and they said that experimental is actually going to become their default pretty soon, I believe, because their experimental is more, more of the trend line system that you would see in a standard price action um, pattern. So like rising wedges, uh, falling wedges, triangles, yada, yada. Uh, the experimental trend lines are going to find more of those patterns um, instead of the original trend lines. The enhanced trend lines are a lot like the original, but you have just more lines, so it's going to have a, uh, a less strict algorithm to find the trend lines. So the enhanced is going to give you a lot more of the trend lines on your chart, um, but they're not going to be as accurate, obviously, because you do have uh, so many more of them. So let's go over original for now. And I will go through a few different charts here. So right now we're looking at Bitcoin on the daily. And as you can see right now, the trend lines are automatically drawing on the wicks. So if you go into the settings here, you can actually change if you want the trend lines to respect the bodies or the wicks. Uh, and as you see, it's going to drastically change where your trend lines are being determined. Uh, because you can definitely have some long wicks on um, Bitcoin. So depending on what asset you're trading, if it has um, a lot of wicks, you might want to switch to bodies. Um, but I would test both of them and see which one has more of a um, a better strike rate. But for right now, I'm going to leave it on wicks. And we currently have it on respecting the gaps. So... You can turn this off and you can ignore gaps. It's not going to matter on Bitcoin because there are no gaps on Bitcoin. But if we go to something like Apple, which is a stock, you're going to have a lot of gaps in between these candles. So if you go to the trends and you have it set to respect the gaps, as you can see here, it's going to change how the algorithm determines where your automatic trend lines are. And I actually think these trend lines look better than the ones that we were getting with the ignore gaps. You still have some strong trend lines coming in here um, from the previous high, but I think that the one that it was ignore or respecting, this gives you a very clear rising wedge. So I'll, I think overall, you should have it to where it ignores the gaps. From my experience, um, using these trend lines on multiple stocks, I found that Ignoring the gaps gave you better trend lines, but I would definitely switch them back and forth every now and then to see um, what the trend lines look like depending on uh, which function you're using. There's also a few different things you can do here with the trend lines on the top here. You have the show trends button. It's going to start out on default at most relevant. This is going to give you the, the strongest trends. Um, you can turn it on more lines and as you can see, it will give you a few more lines depending on what your chart is. So like if we go to Amazon here, we can take off more lines, go to most relevant. It doesn't give you that many more lines. This is going to give you a few more that the algo was not fully picking up. Um, and then if you go to the all lines, it gives you literally every single line um, in their system. Uh, I don't recommend turning this on. I don't see why you would need to use this. 
uh, unless you're doing some kind of like cluster system where you're looking for massive clusters of trend lines. Um, you can't really trade like this, or I can't personally. Um, so I don't recommend turning the all unfiltered on. So I'm going to, for right now, go back to most relevant. And I'm also going to switch this up real fast and show you more of the advanced or enhanced. The enhanced is giving a, it has a softer formula. I don't know the exact changes. I think it requires less touches. So it requires less touches to form that trend line. Um, so you're going to get more trend lines, obviously. The more stricter the formula, the less trend lines you're going to get. Experimental, let me turn off the more lines. The experimental seems to have the strongest trend lines for more of like short term and swing trading um, that I found because like I, like I said earlier, the experimental finds those more price action related trend lines. So as we can see here, you had almost a, um, almost a wedge forming, but then you had a break of this downward trend line and it gave you that perfect little break signal to go long around what was that 1772 and then you had your spike up afterwards you said i've been gone for two minutes and now there's a spider net on my screen yeah that's the more lines function that's why i was saying earlier that if you're using the all lines you're definitely like look at this how do you trade that you can't trade that um so i really don't recommend turning the unfiltered on uh, i think they're just allowing you to turn that on to kind of see what their system is doing. Um, but I would not recommend turning that on. Okay, so now that you've seen kind of how the trend lines are drawn, I'm going to go into how to set up the alerts. So let's go back to Bitcoin here. So all right, for the alerts, there's three main alerts. So if you right click on any trend line, you can do this with trend lines that you've drawn, or you can do this with trend lines that the system draws for you. So if you right click on any trend line, doesn't matter where on the line, you can click anywhere on the line and it will give you this create alert at this line. Let's go ahead and turn that on and it gives you this really nice beautiful screen here and you have three main triggers. <clears throat> you can use one trigger, you can use multiple triggers, you can use all of them. The three main triggers are breakthrough, Fires when a candle breaches through the trend line and closes. So that's what you're going to see when you have just a single candle breaking the trend line. The next signal is going to be a touch. This is going to fire when a candlestick touches a line then retraces. That's what you're going to see when a candle hits it, does not close above it, and fails downward. Or if it's on a uh, downward trend line, you're going to hit it, you're not going to close below it, and you're going to bounce higher. That's going to be your touch. The bounce is going to be a two candlestick pattern, so it's going to be a little bit later. You're going to wait for confirmation, basically. You're going to get a touch, so like your previous alert, where you run into the, the trend line and start to fail downward or start to bounce off of it. And then your next candle retraces and closes. So it's Basically a full confirmation. Another thing you can do is you can adjust the um, sensitivity. So this is going to adjust that range on the trend line that's going to trigger these alerts. So you have the breakthrough, the touch, and the bounce. These all have to be inside that sensitivity range. So if you want something to be exact on that trend line, you want to lower that sensitivity. But if you want something to be more of kind of, eh, it doesn't really have to touch the trend line, but if it goes near it, I want to be alerted. Then you want to adjust the sens sensitivity to make it higher. So obviously you don't want to do something like this where your sensitivity is really high because that's not really going to help you. Um, I would definitely go for something that's kind of like a happy medium uh, depending on what kind of trend line you're using. But I would go for something that's not too big, but definitely not uh, exact. The exact lines are going to be very, uh, very rare. I would go for something kind of like, like this.
This, you can set your confirmation candles on what time frame you want to be confirmed on. It says this alert will fire when a candlestick on this time frame closes that matches the trigger criteria. So you can set this alert on whatever time frame uh, you want to be alerted on. Alert name, obviously just the name, description. Um, you can put a description um, for like what time frame it is, yada yada. And then you can set obviously um, how long you want until it expires. And then how many times do you want it to trigger before it will delete this alert. So if you go ahead and create this alert, it will highlight your actual alert. It will show your sensitivity. It will show your name. And then it will go into your alert list. So if you go to your alert list here, you can see here I have my Bitfinex um, daily versus weekly uh, trend line alert. These trend lines work a little differently if you are using their proprietary raindrop candles. So as you can see here, if you use the proprietary raindrop candles, the highs and lows are calculated just a slightly different. Um, so you're going to see a different trend line be created on these candles. So watch out for that um, if you're using the raindrops. You want to make sure that if you, for example, if you're setting an alert on this line here, you don't have that trend line on the raindrop candles. You can still set an alert on this line here because this is one of your, this turns into one of your rage rollings. So you have an alert on this line on the regular candlesticks. So when you switch over to the raindrops, it's going to keep that line there um, as a rage drawing. This is not going to be one of their lines that they're automatically drawing for you, but it's going to be one of your lines um, in the system. So you can quickly go ahead and make an alert on that line if you want. You can delete it. Um, but as you can see here, these, these trend lines are going to be different than the ones on the candles. So keep an eye on this. You can see when I switch over to candles, you're going to get different trend lines. They're not very different. They're almost exactly the same. But you can see here, this caught a trend line way back here that the regular candlesticks did not catch. So keep an eye on that if you are switching to raindrop candles and trading um, trading on raindrops instead of the regular candles. And as you can see here, even if you're on raindrops, it doesn't matter. You can change your trend line system. You can use the enhanced. You can use the experimental. And same thing with the wick and body. These are going to calculate different on the raindrops because the wicks are going to be different than what you would see on a on a standard candle. And this is what I was talking about earlier with the experimental um, experimental trend lines. You're going to see more of these price action patterns that you typically don't see on the um, lower criteria trend lines. You can see you have almost a beautiful falling wedge here. So one last thing, if you have a trend line if you have a chart loaded that has a bunch of trend lines and let's say you come back to this chart tomorrow or the next day and you load the chart sometimes trend spider will keep those same trend lines and it will not calculate the new trend lines with that new price action so make sure when you load up your chart if you want to get the most recent trends you want to make sure you're hitting this refresh button and it's going to go ahead and refresh and then it's going to give you the brand new trend lines with the recent price action. So right now um, it didn't change my trend lines because I loaded this recently. But if you load this a day, um, a day or two later, you're going to want to refresh. But that is going to be it for the trend line video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in chat. But I think their trend line system is pretty much self-explanatory. There's nothing too crazy that you need to know. The most advanced thing about their trend line system is using the alerts. But those are also very simple. Uh, as I showed earlier, you just right click on any line and you can set up the alerts very easily. Uh, one of the things I really like about their alert system with the trend lines is you can make your own trend lines.
and then you can set up your alerts on the trend lines that you make. So I really like that. I like that you can just draw whatever trend lines or horizontal lines that you want on your chart, and then you can set up the same alert system uh, using your drawings as you do for the automatic ones. So if you want to turn on the breakthrough alerts on the trend lines, I don't think I mentioned this earlier. All you have to do is click this little button right up here that turns on the highlights for when it's breaking down or breaking up from a trend line. So that is it for the trend line video. Our next video is going to be on the candlestick pattern um, recognition software. As you can see here, I'll give you guys a little taste. You can go into the candlestick system and use a bunch of different candlestick patterns. It will find these candlestick patterns for you and highlight them on your chart. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you did like the content, and I will be releasing more videos in the future. But all right, guys, I'll see you guys later. Catch you guys tomorrow. Peace out.